I'm looking at what's happening around me, in the world around me, and at myself as well. And I'm looking at the political world, and I notice now that politics is about self-interest nowadays. Uh, every group has an agenda and it's about what they want for their group. It's not about what is good for the country. You know, uh, one of the Kennedy guys, Robert, o, was it Robert Kennedy said, think not uh, what your country can do for you? Was it Robert or Ted? John? John? Oh, okay. He said, think not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That's out the window now. Uh, every group seems to have its own agenda, and it has nothing, to, it's not good for the country, and in most cases, it has nothing to do with the country. All right? For an example, um, the abortion issue. The abortion issue is a very selfish issue. It's all about the individual, not about the child. Just think about that. It's about a woman deciding that she doesn't want to be bothered with a child. It gets in the way of her going to work. It gets in the way of her having to raise it, feed it, guide it. It gets in the way of having to date or whatever they're doing. And so what they do, because it's, a, it's ego driven, they will kill that child in the womb and excuse it away, saying it's my body, it's my choice, God wanted it that way. And I don't know if you can get in it. Well, you can. That is selfishness to the core. Just think about it. And the ego allows them to make up an excuse that causes them to feel good about what they're doing. It won't let them see what they're doing. And they go so far as to pass laws that would allow them to do it. It's not about the child at all. Uh, uh, can you imagine killing your own child in your own body. It just, it's just, it's total, total ego. And the abortion issue is all selfish, all about that. It's all evil. Now, if a woman's life is on the line, um, it's a different story. The woman should have the first choice to live since she's already living, if that's possible. But it's all about, and speaking of that, I heard this story yesterday from this grandmother who said that her daughter were having a child and at child birth, the mother died and the daughter survived. And the little girl is about four years old now. And she said that her daughter is always, I mean, the granddaughter is always talking to the mother now. She talks to her mother all the time. And, and the grandmother said, she says, like, who are you talking to? She's like, I'm talking to my mom, my mother. She's like, I don't see anyone. She said, and the little girl said, well, it's because my mother's in the spirit now. You can't see her, but I see her. How many people believe that's possible? Would that scare you, though? No? Maybe if I was four, it wouldn't scare me. Can you imagine mama popping up right now? <laughs> <laughs> and so I asked the grandmother, did she believe it, what she's scared about? She said she believed it, and it does make her a little nervous. She, because she believes it, and yet she doesn't believe it. Because as we get older, we're told that spirits are bad things. You know, it's a bad thing that we should be afraid of. You know, you get older, you start, you lose consciousness, you become afraid of things that you're not afraid of as kids. But anyway, abortion is, is selfish to the core. You're killing a life so you can live your selfish ego life. It's just mind-blowing to me. Another thing is the same-sex marriage thing. Total, absolutely ego-driven and very selfish. Because what it does is it deliberately destroys the order of the family. It restructures the family. It changes the family of, uh, of God and Christ, Christ and man, man over woman, the woman over the children. That's the perfect order. But these people are so selfish and ego-driven and wicked that they are passing the law to change that. And in return, the next generation, the next generation will suffer for it because the more you give into that, the more that order is going to be broken and the kids are going to suffer for it. 
because unless you have that order, you, you suffer in life, period. The next one is the black movement, black folks, not all, not all, not all, but most. Uh, they want affirmative action. They want, uh, they, they don't want voter laws, which require you to have an ID in order to go and vote. They say, oh, no, you're trying to stop blacks from voting. And they lie and say that, you know, people want to stop them. It's not true. Common sense says we need order. We need order. We, we want, the. I think voting is one of the most important things you can do in life. And so we need some kind of structure there to make sure that the crooks don't get in and, and mess it up because if you vote in the wrong people, we all suffer for it. But they, they say, oh, no, this is uh, the laws. They don't want blacks to vote. And blacks are saying, that's right, we shouldn't have an ID. And I'm thinking, we shouldn't have to have an ID. And I'm thinking, how can you feel that way? You have to have an ID to go to the toilet nowadays. Have you noticed that? No. But how, how did we get so suffers like that? Where did that come from that you have a group of people who are unwilling to do it the right way? They fight. They go to court. They call names. They fight against doing it the right way. And I remember growing up, black people did it the right way for the most part. They loved what was right. They did what was right to the best of their ability. And now you have this black agenda that is totally ego-driven and all wrong. And it's just out there. And it's not being discussed in that manner at all. It's, it's, people don't discuss the ego. They just say, well, the whites are against the blacks, the Republicans are against the Democrats, and those are so mean Republicans don't want us to vote. And it's not about what's best for the country. What's best for America? Is it best that we have IDs in order to vote? Because we have illegal aliens. We have all kinds of folks here now. Is it best that we have IDs to make sure that everybody is uh, a citizen of this great nation? They don't talk about that. They don't talk about what's best. Another thing, liberal women created a shameless society. The women's movement have caused so much destruction in the family, in our country with different laws, and their laws are totally against men. I can't think of one liberal law that's been passed, in the la and I tried to, that's been passed in the last 50 years that enhanced the life of the man and of the family. I can't think of one. And yet, their agenda is in the forefront of our lives all the time. This is evil. Our battle is a spiritual battle between good and evil, Right versus wrong. It really is. I was looking at a program this morning as I was getting dressed. In this program, they take black boys off to a camp somewhere. Steve Harvey and all those guys involved in it. And they, they show the black guys how to, you know, work out, exercise, and they try to help them get their life together. But the one thing that they do that they may be successful in helping them get careers going and kind of moving forward, which is not a bad thing at all. I like that part of it. But the one thing they do, there's some point that they get, there's a point when they get with the mothers, because mostly women, these kids are single mother, with single mothers. So they get at a point where they bring the kids together with the mothers, and guess who the bad guy is? The dad. So they're not encouraging these boys to love their fathers and mothers. They're encouraging them to hate their fathers and love mama. At the end of the program, they even, well, the one I saw, I don't know if they do it all the time, they even bring the, the boys and the mamas back together, and they had the boys say, I love you, mama. You're the best, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wow. And so they're hating their fathers, not realizing that as long as they hate their fathers, they're never going to find peace. You, they can make money, and that's not a bad thing. These guys need to learn how to work. They need to learn how to be independent. But as long as they hate their fathers, they're not going to. And they don't have the mother. The mother's doing a little counseling session. She, I haven't seen it because this is my first time watching the program. Not one mother said what she did wrong. Not one. It was all that bad father and, I'm sorry, son, I allowed you to go through that. Your bad father. 
but the mother did not admit it. Like the father had nothing better to do but wake up in the morning and say, you know what, let me just beat my wife today before, what? Oh, where my mic? Oh, thank you, Dad. Like the father had nothing better to do than just to get up. You know, before I go to work, let me just beat my wife for no reason. Beating is not good. I'm not encouraging it. And when he gets home at night, just right after dinner before going to bed, let me beat her again. And so I, it just, it's ego-driven. And ego is evil. And we got to do something about it. And so that's why what made me look at myself and also it made me think, let me ask the folks today here in the, in the building and also out there in uh, uh, TV land, have you ever done anything in your life since being on earth that wasn't ego driven at all? There was no ego in it at all. I noticed this about myself the other day. I'm driving and I'm getting on the freeway and this person tried to jump in front of me to get on the freeway. And so I let them in and then they waved at me saying, thank you. And I waved back and I felt that feeling. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I said, I would never wave at anybody else. I felt that feeling when I waved back because I let them in and they acknowledged it. And then my mind tried to tell me, oh, Jesse, that was fine, because if you had not weighed back, you would have been rude. You know, it's trying to help me cover it up. Isn't that amazing? Uh-huh. And I don't know. I don't know if you could weigh back without the feeling. You can't, not me, you. Can I? I don't know. I had to wait until next time. But let me tell you, I remember when I was a kid, and I used to work in the cotton field, and I was very close to my grandmother, really close to my grandmother. And in the cotton fields, we would stop around noon to have lunch. And then I would off. I remember one time as a kid offering my grandmother my lunch, right? And I would always kind of do stuff for her. And, and some of the other women in the field heard me say, oh, mama, you want my lunch, right? And they're like, Roly, her name is Rosalie Thomas. Roly, you got, that's a good boy you got. That's a good grand boy. I remember feeling high from that. And I think that's where my stuff started at. <laughs> I was thinking about this yesterday. And I may have started before that, but that's all I can see right now. But I think it started right there. And so I've been trying to think, in the last 24 years since starting Bond, have I done anything for anybody where I didn't feel some sense of ego gratification? And I started thinking about this yesterday. So far, I haven't come up with anything. Look like everything I've done, I had a, uh, like a good feeling about it. But I would say, oh, I feel happy that they can see. Oh, I feel, you know, you feel good about it. And I didn't realize that undercurrent ego is still there working. And that the big stuff we see all the time. But this other little stuff just kind of that we don't see is what's working us as well. We got to see our whole motivation. And unless you start paying attention to yourself, you're not going to see it, and it's going to keep you from God. It's going to hold you back. So look at those things. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for coming. Hi, I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. You can get involved by calling 800-411-2663, 800-411-BOND, 